we've talked about the past, the present. There's only one way to go. Let's go to the future. Oh, we have a guest. We have a guest. Hey, guys. Hey. Looks like you're getting a little low. Well, look here. It's Lisa from El Cajon Brewing Company, the general manager. Hi. <laughs> Lisa, you're a sweetheart for bringing us some uh, replacement beer. Well, I, we drink our Amazon Red. We brew this here. Um, proceeds of this beer, my pint, goes to the Historical Society. So we encourage people to come on down and get a pint of our Amazon Red. So good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Now, how many beers do you guys brew here at the brewery itself? We brew seven. Our most popular is our El Cajonas IPA. And how long have you guys been here? We opened in October. So we are almost on our nice oh, brand new. Congrats. Congrats. Right Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. It's been exciting. It's been fun. Um, a lot of hard work has gone into this place. So we just look forward to plenty of more beer to go over. Yeah, yeah. The feedback from the uh, community. But... It's been very positive. We um, have a lot of locals coming in from El Cajon just thanking us for opening our brewery here. It's been well needed. So they just keep piling in and bringing their friends and family. And so you guys have a full menu too, right? Yes, we do. We have appetizers to burgers to sandwiches, um, pizzas. I'm having them make you a pizza right now. So, so I hear that you, when they were making the menu, they tried to incorporate beer into like every single... Beer is in everything. In our pizzas, we use the malts from our tanks uh -huh. in the dough. Um, all, everything sauteed with beer. Burgers are cooked with beer. Vegetables sauteed in beer. Uh, beer batter. That's how it should be done. How it should yeah. be done. World famous and outcome from what we've been told, we have the best onions in town. You guys have to try those out as well. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yes. So, a pair of brothers on it, correct? Correct. Well, what are, what are their names? Stephen and David Meadows. And I hear one of them had a brewery in Sweden for years. That is correct. And then came back to San Diego. We're very thankful that he came back to yeah. San Diego. Yes. Been, awesome been a nice addition of the San Diego beer community, which continues to grow it's leaps and bounds. Growing every day, yeah. believe it or not. We have a brewery popping up, it seems like everywhere in every city. Yeah. You guys have a nice niche here because there's really nothing around you, no one brewing around you. I mean, you go out to yes, Alpine, yeah, yeah. Alpine, and then yes. obviously the closer you get to downtown, you have a few things. So you kind of, you guys kind of have your own little niche. We're, we're secluded. Yeah, the location's perfect for all the home. Oh, right in the heart of Alcohol. Yeah. Couldn't get anywhere better. Hey, cameraman needs a beer refill. Oh, oh. Can't leave him out. It's full service here. That's what it's all about. Great service, beer, and food. I noticed you guys have a bunch of TVs out there, too. Yes. Yes, for football season, all sportings. Thank right. you, sir. That was clever how you... So this is the whole... This is all done. This is where the magic is all done, in this room. Yes, each tank holds a different beer. The processing of it is all up to David. He's our beer master, so. Beer master. Uh, and the future is really bright. You guys are going to enter your beers into contests? Actually, or? we are in May. We are ending um, the Beer World Cup. Nice. So they're working on that right now. Can't tell you what beers we're entering. It's a Ooh, secret, but we awesome. are entering it. <laughs> <laughs> we are in it. So oh, like some red. Yeah. Red's right. Right. Well, it's probably safe to say your IPA. Yeah. If that's your flagship beer, it's got good reviews. Very good reviews. Yeah. The command for it is really demanding, so. Gotcha. And it works. Awesome. Well, well, thank you, Lisa. Yeah, thank you for the no Cheers. 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 Thank you for having us. No worries. Great. Yes. Thank, Thank you very much. We encourage everybody to come on down. Absolutely. All right. This county represent. Come on down. You guys open seven days a week? Seven days a week, yes. Okay. Uh, we open at 11 every day. Okay. It works with my schedule. I don't know my weekends. <laughs> weekends, I mean, of course. Yeah, it no, works for me. All right. Thanks, Lisa. No worries. Thank you. No worries. You guys have a good day. All right. Thank you. Back to baseball? Back to baseball. All right. What were we talking about? We are talking about the future. We're talking about the future. You know, on Twitter the, uh, a couple of weeks ago, you turned into a little Padre Nonis. You were predicting the Rizzo trade, you were pick predicting that they were going to acquire a reliever, mm -hmm. and the third prediction was that Wyland would be up in the rotation by May. I guess we got a while to wait for that one. 
But do you have any other predictions of what we can look forward to in 2012? Well, it's funny. You know, this team's going to hit the spring training here shortly with not a whole lot of jobs open and not a whole lot of open competition for jobs. Which, you know, uh, you know, if you set up your team correctly in the offseason, you make your player acquisitions, you know, free agents, trades and such. You, know, you want to make sure that you, you've got a pretty good handle on things. Certainly injuries pop up and you want to make sure you have enough depth. But, you know, I, I think you're going to see some pretty interesting things this year. I think you're going to see a lot of these young guys uh, get to the big leagues. Um, I think uh, one of the things was maybe the younger guys. Uh, you mentioned Joe Wheeler, him and Robbie Irvin, the two guys that they obtained in the Mike Adams deal. I think we're going to see those guys uh, sooner rather than later. This might be a little bit of a, I don't want to say transitory season, but I think you're going to see some young guys get their feet wet for the first time. And, um, but it's not to say they're going to completely punt 2012. I mean, I think the acquisitions of uh, and, yeah, yeah, Street, Casher, Street, uh, and in this division, the West, I think it's up for grabs. I think we've had three different teams win the division the last three years, so uh, we'll see what happens. Or, so we've talked about Joe Whelan and Robbie Erlin, who we got for Mike Adams. What about the number one piece we got for Adrian Gonzalez and his impact in the 2012 season, Casey Kelly? That's a good question. You know, it's funny you make all these trades here. We seem, sort of seem to have forgotten about uh, the real big one from December 2010, the Adrian Gonzalez deal. Um, Casey Kelly's still young, still has a very bright future. I could see him uh, probably starting, starting the season at AAA. You know, we still have to remember this guy's still only a few years removed from being a position player. I think uh, the transition takes a little longer for some guys than it does others. And, you know, about how to set up hitters, how to attack them, um, trusting your stuff, pitch development, things like that. I think he's progressing pretty well. Um, I, th I think this is a, it's not a critical year for him by any means, but I think it's an important year for him. And this is a guy that you put a lot of stock in when you made that trade, and I think uh, the Padres want to see him uh, continue to make you know, make gains. Uh, that said, boy, pitching in the Pacific Coast League, as we mentioned earlier in the segment, wow. You know, you better, good luck with that. Yeah, you better hope your games are in Tacoma in May when it's like 30 degrees out and the ball doesn't carry, not somewhere else. Or would they keep him in double A? Uh, that, that's, a, that's a possibility as well. But, you know, the other thing is, you. You know, for these young guys, you have to challenge them. Yeah. And the Padres have always been pretty good about challenging guys. And you know, it doesn't do any good to keep a guy at a certain level and just let him dominate. We need, you know, you need, you need to move him up, see how he fares against better hitters. And the Pacific Coast League is you know, kind of a veteran hitters league. You kind of have these what they call four A players, guys that are kind of tweeners, guys that maybe have had some major league experience. And uh, you know, I, I think that's going to be important for his development, how he does this year. So, I think maybe a September call. Yeah, potentially. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think there's a couple guys that uh, uh, may be ahead of him at this point, Joe Whelan, maybe Robbie Earl. Right. But uh, I tell you what, that, and that's, that's no knock on Casey. I, I don't think he's far off at all. Okay. I have one question here in the, in the prediction category, and it comes uh, you know, regarding Chase Headley. Is he somebody who is going to make it past the July 31st deadline? We know that uh, the name that we hear a lot of time in the system is Jed Jerko. Um, is Jerko possibly ready towards the end of the season? Will Headley still be here? What do you think? I think Jerko still needs some time. This is a guy that hasn't even completed a full uh, double-A season. And uh, even though he has, a very, he has very good skills with the bat, you know, he's a plus hitter, uh, very highly regarded. I think he still needs some time. I like Chase Headley. I think he's a good fit for this team. Um, are we blowing up here? What's going on? <laughs> no, but I think uh, Chase is. Uh, I think a lot of he, he he gets maligned a lot by fans who see him for what he's not. He plays a position where you would expect maybe a guy to hit 30 home runs. That's just not his skill set. I think he will hit more home runs this year. I think his uh, platoon splits, his uh, left right. You know, he's a switch hitter. I think uh, he improved big time on those numbers last year. I think he's in for a pretty good year. Um, and you know, I think he's a pretty steady defender over the third. So I think he stays. I think the Padres like him. I know Jed Boyer liked him. I know uh, Josh Burns likes him. So I think he stays. All right, Corey, we do a segment here called Rapid Fire, and I take care of the rapid fire warm-up. This is to get your mind going just right. Okay, so right. you're like one of those like red 
buttons for that office store? Like we're, staples? we're not quite that big time yet, but uh, maybe that's in the future. Your second appearance. Just like focus ahead. <laughs> All right, question, question number one. We know that spring training is coming around the corner. You're on your way to spring training. Better music as you pass through Yuma. Band of Horses or Nickelback? Oh, Band of Horses. I'm anti-Nickelback. Why do you hate Canada? <laughs> I love Rush. <laughs> Fair, good answer. Second question. You are a dangling gold cross earring. Do you want to be Dave Parker's or Barry Bonds? I'd say Dave Parker. Did you ever see that throw he made in the 1979 All-Star Game in the Kingdom? I Old did. Uh, that, that's a good answer, but unfortunately, Dave Parker is incorrect. The Cobra's earring was good, but he used cocaine, and cocaine is far worse than the use of pets. Uh, okay. Question three. I thought there were no wrong answers. Okay, never mind. <laughs> you are a mustache. Are you Jack Morris's or Alan Trammell's? That is a straight 80s question there where it's perfectly acceptable to be a ball player with a cool mustache. I'm gonna go Morris. That is correct. Alan Trammell did not have a mustache. Question four. If given the choice, Jack Morris's mustache from game seven of the 1991 World Series or Barry Bonds' dangling gold cross earring from game seven of the 1992 NLCS, where he failed to throw out Sid Bream at home play. I'm gonna go mustache. That's the correct answer. You know why? Barry was, he he always always Barry was out of position. Because they lost the game and Jack Morris won his, so you go with the mustache nice. every okay. day. Question five. You've just finished an 18 inning marathon at Petco on getaway day. You were forced to dramatically rewrite your MLB column four separate times. You are frustrated and thirsty. Do you drink the Green Flash West Coast IPA that spent the afternoon in 91 degree August heat? Or do you head for the mountains and drink an ice cold Coors Light? Oh, I'll drink the, I'll take the warm craft beer any day. That is actually incorrect. What? A hot IPA would send you right to the restroom. Nobody needs that on a hot day. That's true. <laughs> question six. And our last question. Are you feeling warm? Am I doing all right? I'm... It doesn't matter. Okay. It only matters that your mind is warming up for rapid fire. You are seeking a credible individual to not only disseminate news on the global economy and presidential politics, but to also provide sound analysis. Do you choose Aaron Burnett of CNN or Nora O'Donnell of CBS? Oh, that's a no-brainer. Aaron Burnett. I'm sorry, the correct answer is actually Nora O'Donnell. O'Donnell has a master's in international studies from Georgetown. Aaron Burnett capped out with a bachelor's degree from Williams College. Not really in the same league. Football <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of it. Do you even know where it is? Williams College. It's a liberal, liberal arts school. Uh, East Coast. Got yeah, you're right there. Well, D3. Massachusetts. Gotcha. God bless her. Corey, you are now ready for rapid fire. Okay, question number one. Yes. Top three breweries in San Diego. Oh, you're going to make me choose. Hey, I have to throw out an alcohol brewing since we're here. There we go. Very good uh, service. Um, I'm a big Iron Fist guy in Vista San Marcos. And uh, I gotta go with the local kids, Carl Strauss. What are the best beers at each one? Okay. Um, I like the Spice of Life Belgian at Iron Fist. Um, I like the Two Tortugas at Carl Strauss. I like all their beers, actually. And then um, here at El Cajon, uh, their IPA, the El Cajon, is supposed to be very good. I haven't had that yet, but the uh, the red the red ale is uh, is exceptional. Yeah. Uh, next question: Best IPA in San Diego, all together. Oh, boy, you guys are putting the screws to me today. Um, best IPA. Um, I have to go with Ballast Point Sculpin. It's a good, good, good answer. Good answer. Excellent answer. Number three. See, there are right answers. Okay, there are right answers. Number three. We know that you're uh, a, a, a 
North Northwest guy. Yeah. Edgar Martinez, Hall of Famer or not? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't penal penalize a guy because he didn't have a glove and couldn't move more than two feet <laughs> in a direction. Hitting credentials alone, he's in. Um, the uh, the camera guy may or may not have written this question in here. Joe Randa, Hall of Famer or not? Uh, El Cajon Hall of Fame? <laughs> he's in. <laughs> he's in. Um, yes or no question. Do the Padres finish ahead of the Giants this year? No. 2012? No. No. Part two, yes or no, did the Padres finish ahead of the Dodgers? Yes. Yes, all right. Part three, ahead of the Diamondbacks? No. Um, might as well go part four. Ahead no, of the part Rockies, four. Ahead of the Rockies? No. So it looks like the Padres finished in fourth place in 2012. You shouldn't have done the math. Right? Well, they should probably still play the games, though. Well, should. I just take my word for it. Probably should. You know a lot. Yeah, I know a little. Lastly, who wins in a fight between Dan Hayes, Bill Center, and Corey Brock? Wow. I guess Steel now, cage style, no hold bar, chairs. I was going to say, it probably depends on what they're serving in the press box at night. <laughs> or who's saying the national anthem. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm going hey, to go Bill Center. You know, he's, uh, he's older than the rest of us. But he's cunning, uh, he knows his city, and um, I think he knows where all the, uh, all the bodies are buried. So I think that he, uh, he's got some connections. I'm going Bill Center. Bill, Bill Center. Center, that is the correct answer. Well, Corey, that about wraps it up for our second edition of Padres and Pints. We'll leave it at that. Elko and Brewing Company. Cheers. 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 Thank you, Corey. Cheers. Bo, Avenger in Chief. Guy standing on the side over there. That's a, a ghost. That and our, and our, our, our pal Lisa. Lisa. Our pal Lisa. She's, she's probably manager. working as she probably should be. She is the general manager. We are freeloaders. Exactly. Well, please. sign it off. Well, actually, we say please, uh, you can read Corey Brock at uh, on Twitter. That would be an excellent idea. At, what, well, what, follow the Padres. At follow the Padres on Twitter and then MLB.com, Padres.com. There we go. Or you could uh, stop out in Arizona and see me in spring training. Just bring some sculpting with you. Bring some sculpting. And some Nickelback soundtrack. You can leave those at home. And have a Jack Morris mustache. That would be a sweet addition <laughs> to spring training. Cheers. 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 I looked empty. Hey, there's the beer. Let's drink. Let's drink till we fall down. Let's drink.